just going to say that every Metro North train, whether it's on the Harlem, Hudson, or New Haven lines, stops at Harlem 125th Street. But that one obviously did not. It was probably a deadhead, meaning non-revenue train. <clears throat> just trying to get the equipment to Grand Central in time for the afternoon rush hour. So, with every Metro North train, or almost every Metro North train, stopping at Harlem 125th Street, who actually gets off here, and what is there to see? Well, we're getting off at Harlem 125th Street, so you don't have to. This is infrared. We're out on the street at the Harlem 125th Street station of Metro North. And here we are looking west on 125th Street. West, this will eventually lead to the Hudson River. But we are going to walk east today. We're going to walk east on 125th Street, starting at the Metro North Harlem 125th Street station, which is at 125th Street and Park Avenue. Moisha's moving, a traditional fixture on 125th Street. Approaching Lexington Avenue and one block from the Metro North Station is the 125th Street stop on the 4, 5, and 6 train. There's an M35 bus which begins here. And there's the next bus waiting to make the run. The M35 bus goes to Randall's Island and Ward's Island and makes a loop around the island and comes back here. The M35 was numbered the M35 in the late 70s, I think. But before that, it was the TB bus. TB standing for Triborough Bridge 
which the bus has to cross in order to get to Randall's and Ward's Island and come back. But I guess in the 70s, with everything else going on in New York, TV didn't seem to be the most inviting name for a bus route. Also along 125th Street, you can get the M60 Select Bus Service, which runs pretty much the width of the entire length of 125th Street from Broadway to here, and then makes very few stops to LaGuardia Airport. So if you want to reach LaGuardia Airport, by public transit from pretty much any place along 125th Street, you can get the M60 select bus service. NYPD security cameras. Hmm. I should say today's a Friday. Friday. March 25th, 2022. After a couple of unusually, well, unusually, just undesirably cold and rainy days, this is uh, a very welcome, sunshiny day in the high 50s, low 60s. And a Friday afternoon, about 12.30. 125th Street, of course, is also called Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Sign says open to the public 24 hours. The chain link fencing says otherwise. Second Avenue and 125th Street. Across the street in the distance is the 125th Street Depot for New York City buses. That depot serves buses pretty much uh, just going up and down First and Second Avenues. Maybe a couple of crosstown routes too. We are searching for pedestrian access to Randall's Island. Don't think we're going to find it over there. So let's cross here.
there have been some recent reconfigurations to the on and off ramps for the Triborough Bridge, which some people insist on calling the RFK or Robert F. Kennedy Bridge. And we may have to look a little harder to find the pedestrian access to Randall's Island. But the Triborough Bridge for vehicles connects Manhattan, Bronx, and Queens. And each one of those legs has pedestrian and bike access. The trick is finding it. signage for vehicles but what about a pedestrian who wants to go to Randall's Island here if your destination is the Bronx this is the Willis Avenue Bridge uh, this is a replacement Willis Avenue Bridge. It was uh, put in place maybe 10 years ago. All right, still looking for pedestrian access. <laughs> to Randall's Island. Where did it go? Where did it go? to find that access. We have a two-way bike path here, so we may be finding out that we've gone four minutes out of the way and there is a much quicker way of getting on the Triborough. Let's see. So this park is called Othmar Amman Park. Othmar Amman was a bridge engineer used by Robert Moses to design, I think, the Triborough um, and other bridges that Robert Moses built. It would make sense that he had a role in designing the Triborough to have a park named after him at the foot of the Triborough. That would make sense. Okay, interesting. Um, this is the first, well, maybe not. But it's a playground with uh, 
that different hours in the warmer months than in the colder. That may be because there's also a pool here. Okay, so now we see here signs for the biker saying RFK Bridge Randalls Island. So that should work for the pedestrian as well. Sorry to have taken you out of the way, but if we hadn't made this turn, I wouldn't have known about Othmaraman Playground. By the way, uh, the firm, I guess, that Mr. Aman founded or was a principal in eventually became Aman and Whitney. We're looking south on 2nd Avenue here. Big signs to direct the motorist. <laughs> and this is new, fairly new. All right. And to orient us. That uh, message, this is a Parks Department sign, but it's also uh, a condition, a traffic condition on every uh, bridge operated by MTA, which includes the Triborough Bridge. Bicycles must be walked across the bridge spans. So we are Where, where, where the you are here is kind of, and we'll be walking across to Randall's Island. And taking note of where the nearest restrooms are. Got it. walking across the Triborough Bridge so you don't have to. But try it, it's fun. There's a M35 bus which will make a loop around the islands. over Othmar Amon Park for playground. And First Avenue, First Avenue that's looking south. First Avenue runs northbound.
So, so far this bridge in terms of pedestrians and bikers is not uh, as well patronized as say the Manhattan or Brooklyn Bridge or Williamsburg. Here's uh, southbound traffic on the FDR and uh, it's very slow because up ahead it merges with traffic coming off the Triborough Bridge also trying to head south on the FDR. Why is this sign here? Because this is a lift bridge crossing this portion of the East River to get us on to Randall's Island. So don't loiter. Don't be stuck on the lift portion of the bridge when it starts to lift. Good safety tip. Looking south on the East River. And you can see it's not very far to Randall's Island. Randall's Island is where the three legs of the Triborough Bridge coming from Manhattan, Bronx, and Queens converge. And it was the site of uh, a three-way toll plaza with toll booths galore, which no longer exists since all the MTA crossings converted to electronic tolling in the last two years. Another view of the FDR. over Randall's Island. Almost all of Randall's and Ward's Island is now park area. But uh, just as the power broker devotes some pages to Robert Moses establishing the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority's headquarters on Randall's Island. Although I think it was just the Triborough Bridge Authority. The tunnel, no, neither the Brooklyn Battery nor Queens Midtown Tunnel had been built yet. <clears throat> But, except for headquarters of Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority, which is now 
branded as MTA Bridges and Tunnels, but is still legally the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority. I should also say, and I think you can see in the distance the hospital-like building, which is a hospital. It's a state mental hospital. Sorry, I don't know if there are other words that I should use to describe it. Here we have some MTA bridges and tunnels support vehicles for the Triborough Bridge. The Parks Department's five borough vehicle maintenance shop is on Randall's Island. Oh, there's a nice scenic part. So the underbelly of the Triborough Bridge Toll Plaza. Hmm. All right. You know, as as much time as I'm sure we'd all like to spend here. Okay, and conveniently they have a sign here, pedestrian access to Bronx and Queens, and that's what we want. As I said before, there were always pedestrian and bikeways built into the three legs of the Triborough Bridge. Right. Before we follow the sign to access to Queens, just here's uh, another support building. See, there's a map. Right. Conveniently with a UR here. So, uh, looks like we got to go around the loop to get out. All right. Just uh, let's look at the bigger picture for a minute. Okay. If you were able to look at the map closely enough, oh, here, another helpful sign. Telling us. <clears throat> this is the way the sign is directing us. So, just consider yourself fortunate enough to be able to get this view of the underside of the Triborough Bridge. Where do we go from here? pretty fast. It's just my opinion.
There was also built a walkway on this side of the Manhattan leg of the bridge, the south walkway. It's closed. I think the last time I walked from Randall's Island to Manhattan, the south walkway was open and maybe the only walkway that was open. With the south walkway being open, you didn't get the opportunity to walk under the underbelly, under the Triborough Bridge Toll Plaza. And this is the Parks Department Five Borough Repair Facility for their vehicles. We are going to try and find our way to the Bronx. Let's see what this building is across the street. I like how these boulders serve as bollards. And it's a restroom, but it's an open. Quick look inside. So it's actually in quite good shape, well maintained, soap dispensers well supplied. I can personally recommend it. Also of note here, city bike. You can ride city bike around Randalls and Wards Island. There are stations here. And let's get a look back of at the Triborough Bridge section that we just crossed from Manhattan. And Here's some other guests of Randall's Island that arrived by air. Don't know why this area is flagged off. you're seeing across the river can't really see a river um, actually just well what you're seeing is the Bronx there is a body of water that separates us here here on Randall's Island which you know islands tend to be separated by bodies of water and the Fresh Direct facility, which when Fresh Direct first started operating in New York, their main production and distribution facility was in Long Island City. And now it's here in the Bronx, the South Bronx. <clears throat>
here. We'll just look briefly inside here. The parking lot for the Parks Department's Five Borough Vehicle Repair Facility. Um, the, you see a van with the Parks Department logo on it, but there are also at least two vehicles from New York City Environmental Protection, also known as DEP. It's likely that those are vehicles used to support the Wards Island Wastewater Treatment Plant or Sewage Treatment Plant, if you prefer, or Water Pollution Control Plant, I think the official terminology. And for those of you who have read The Power Broker or just otherwise curious about Robert Moses and his legacy. Here is the headquarters building of what was originally the Triborough Bridge Authority and then the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority. And now, again, branded MTA Bridges and Tunnels, but still officially the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority. Let's just get another look from a different angle. And it's still the headquarters of MTA Bridges and Tunnels. in the crosswalk, sort of. Uh-oh. Got to put the uh, waterproofness of my new shoes to the test. There's the M35 bus making the loop of the island. So I think these are vehicles awaiting repair or having just been repaired. Most of them are for the Parks Department, but I see, I see some from the Department of Environmental Protection. As I was saying before, there's a wastewater treatment plant on Wards Island, which is connected to Randall's Island. And these DEP vehicles are probably assigned to that plant. Although, some of them look like they're not. So, again, trucks and vans awaiting repair. Now, we were looking for a way to get to Queens. This is the, I'm sorry, yes, a way to get, a way to get to the Bronx. And I said before, if I said Queens, I was mistaken. We want to go to the Bronx. And here's one way. This is part of the original ramp. Um, or the, the original access to the Bronx when the bridge was built in the 30s. The 
doesn't there's no sign here telling you that this will take you to the Bronx there's this map oh here we go pedestrian walkway to the Bronx and of course it, this sign isn't at the entrance to either this ramp or this ramp it's here <laughs> all right again another warning if you're a cyclist you have to walk your cycle over the bridge now that's one way to get to the Bronx well, we're going to take a newer and better way. And that's a good question. I don't know if this walkway that we're on is also a bikeway or if bicycles are expected to use the roadways, which do have vehicular traffic, but not a whole lot. Don't know what those uh, two smokestack-like structures are. Back and then let's see. This is the Bronx leg of the Triborough Bridge. And looking up, and the, this roadway called Bronx Shore Road because again, the Bronx is right over there. Right over there. So this uh, imposing structure above us is the Hellgate line. It's now owned by Amtrak. I think it was originally built by the New Haven Railroad. Um, and it's a critical link for Amtrak trains going from or going between New York and Boston. The trains leave Penn Station, go through tunnels under the East River, they surface in Long Island City, and then they, uh, in Astoria, become elevated onto this Hellgate line and cross into the Bronx and on their way to Boston. So, this is new. Uh, I don't think there was ever a walkway and bikeway, uh, certainly one not nicely paved and signed like this, under the Hellgate Viaduct. And, but it's here now. And this is called the Hellgate Pathway. So, why is the railroad viaduct above us called the Hellgate Line? Why is this the Hellgate Pathway? Well, it's the Hellgate Pathway because it's underneath the Hellgate Line. But why is it called the Hellgate Line? Because this area where the East River and Harlem River converge was treacherous for ships way back when, um, and hence the name Hellgate. So nicely marked with uh, separate sides for a lot of its length between uh, and separation between bicycles and pedestrians.
And uh, even after this Hellgate pathway was constructed, we had to wait a bit for, oh, and look at this, a bicycle tire pump. I wonder if it works. Plane taking off from LaGuardia Airport. So this is called, well, it's, I guess, according to the Randalls Island Park Alliance, it's called the 132nd Walkway, 132nd Street Walkway on Google Maps. And I think the Randalls Island official map that's posted here and that we saw earlier, it's called the... Uh, Randall's Island Connector, or the Bronx Connector. And here we have, it looks like a real live railroad crossing, which is kind of unexpected here in the city. So what does this sign say? Oh, path may be closed for up to an hour to allow for train movement, very slow train movement, presumably. And I wonder if this is all automated that uh, circuits in the tracks activate the gates to allow trains to cross while closing these gates to keep pedestrians and cyclists from entering the tracks while the train is crossing. These railroad cars, <laughs> these railroad cars are making me thirsty. These railroad cars, I believe, contain trash, household trash uh, that is collected by the sanitation department in some or all of the Bronx and trucked here where to a transfer station here where it's loaded onto containers on railroad cars and shipped presumably to an upstate landfill upstate New York. Here we have, I didn't know this was here either, the New York Post. I don't know if any Amtrak trains will cross this line while we're under it kind of curious as to whether it's a loud sound or not. Looks like it's coming to an end in about a quarter of a mile. But if that is indeed the New York Post plant, why isn't there anyone here? It is a Friday. Is it abandoned? Did the post move somewhere else? Leaving Randall's Island Connector. 
okay. Thank you for letting us know. Now, where are we? At least we have a sign up ahead that says there's a bike route to the left. So, presumably that will take us somewhere. That's where we're going. Somewhere. What movie is that a line from? That's where we're going. Somewhere. this building across the street or part of this building or a nearby building is a sanitation garage for sanitation trucks serving this area of the Bronx. Right, well, let's see where the bike route takes us. So we're now in the South Bronx at the corner of Willow Avenue and 132nd Street. And we're walking north on 132nd Street. Street. And it looks like there is going to be a bike lane constructed here, two-way bike lane. I think at this overpass ahead, or I think that highway is the Bruckner, and it's moving very slowly. The Bruckner is, it heads northeast, connects with I-95. But it is a Friday afternoon, it's about 1.30. So, not, I don't know when the Friday afternoon rush starts now rush to leave the city at the beginning of the weekend. One thirty seems about right. 
and look. Nope, not moving very well on three different levels. Four, actually. <laughs> if we had taken the originally constructed walkway on the Triborough Bridge Bronx leg, we would have ended up here. Let's get back to 132nd Street. I think this is a sanitation garage. Not a lot of room to walk here. Parks Department truck. There are no sidewalks here. Here, maybe. We had smell a vision. I smell something really good baking now. What is the Bronx Grit Facility? So, before wastewater from this area of the Bronx flows to, I'm guessing, the Wards Island Wastewater Treatment Plant on Wards Island, uh, it, the <clears throat> wastewater passes through the Grit Facility you can see a container uh, there on a track. And that's the whole, the grit. Uh, the wastewater passes through screens, moving screens, a uh, combination screen and conveyor belt that filter out the grit, lift it up, deposit it into those containers and is taken away to landfill somewhere.
fresh direct truck. Two fresh direct trucks. See what we see. Here we go. What well, was 133rd Street a few blocks ago is now Bruckner Boulevard. Before it runs side by side with the Bruckner Expressway. So we're going to turn west on Bruckner Boulevard and cross the street, Milk Burger. I guess that's like a, a step down from Milk Steak. I shouldn't say this is the middle of nowhere, but, and then this is a nicely decorated wall here. Again, it's March 25th, 2022, and uh, unleaded appears to be 445 at this uh, speedway. I was going to say Safeway. It looks like it's the same price across the street at the Shell. Just one block away on 132nd Street, your Food Fest Depot. Your restaurant superstore. Tanker truck about to be towed away. And a, but coming to its rescue, a Bud Light truck.
truck across the street. Amazing at a happy hour, French Max. Don't know what French Max is and don't know what the happy hour is. Is it in the truck? This Gulf station has significantly higher prices than the other two stations within a block. Go figure. After waiting all that time, we're rewarded with one, this distant view of the Manhattan skyline and the Billionaire's Row Towers, the Pulaski Playground, because what better place to bring your kids to play? than this little bit of acreage sandwiched in between three or four expressways. But it looks new here. This playground has longer hours during the warm weather months. Hmm. An abandoned scooter. This is also new, and these new sections of the Pulaski Playground have the so-called World's Fair benches. Or so-called. I call them that. The Parks Department calls them that. This is the Willis Avenue Bridge, which takes traffic from First Avenue in Manhattan across the Bronx. And this is Willis Avenue. And Willis Avenue continues north and the New York Marathon crosses into the Bronx over the Willis Avenue Bridge. Marathoners spend a relatively short distance in the Bronx, I think only a little over a mile out of the 26.2 miles. So it's worth pointing out this new construction in the South Bronx, in the southernmost Bronx, 
new residential construction. Across from, I would say early 1900s. like more residential construction is taking place here with demolition of this building. So we're just waiting to cross. I think it's safe to say that none of these retail establishments were here even a few years ago. Alexander Avenue now, walking north. And Good Times Deli. Can't beat Good Times. Now, uh, this place I read about this morning while looking at Google Maps, and I'm going to check it out. Pause. So, this is the, other than making it at home, from scratch with unsweetened cocoa. This is the highest percentage cocoa hot chocolate I've been able to buy, buy and drink live here. Just wanna get this mural. We're crossing under, I think the Deegan, the beginning of the Deegan, where the Deegan meets the Bruckner. We are walking north on Alexander Avenue. And 
as the sign says, this is a NYCHA development, the J.P. Mitchell houses. some exterior work going on here. Not sure why there's sidewalk bridging here, unless they're expecting something to fall from one of the top floors. Reassuring thought. The Choco Bar Cortez, where I stopped briefly, besides making this wonderful 80% cocoa hot chocolate, sells chocolate bars in various uh, grades of cocoa, including white chocolate. Uh, but they specialize in chocolate from the Dominican Republic. Okay, an old, older style, former fire alarm, and now combination fire and police call box. I used to think that those older style call boxes with the flame on top were peculiar to Brooklyn and maybe even while well, Brooklyn was still a separate city but now I've seen them in Manhattan and now the Bronx here we have 138th Street we're going to turn left and walk west on 138th here's the Number six, local stop at 3rd Avenue and 138. And oh, let's just see. Because there is a NYPD precinct across the street. Nice looking building. At least the exterior. So... It's the 40th precinct. Obviously, didn't want to appear to be filming it, but there were two uniformed police officers leading a man handcuffed behind his back into the 40th precinct station. Here, um, I don't know if that's a decoy. <laughs> um, the car's in bad shape. Very bad shape. Again, my favorite kind of police car, unmarked in the front, in the back, I mean. Unmarked in the front and with a regular passenger car license plate. But on the side, 
NYPD. Don't be lulled into a false sense of complacency because you see a plain white car front or rear. Here, as a biker or a pedestrian, we could turn left and cross back into Manhattan over the 3rd Avenue Bridge, or we could continue to the Madison Avenue Bridge, or we could turn right and go to the hub. What's the hub? That is the main downtown business area in this part of the Bronx. <laughs> this is Third Avenue, and Third Avenue passes through the hub. Uh, we're at Third Avenue and 138th. If I recall correctly, the hub is around 149th. This is the route of the New York Marathon when it passes through the Bronx. I think the runners run west on 138th Street. And cross back into Manhattan on the Madison Avenue Bridge. is a Metro North diesel train heading to Grand Central. There's the locomotive in the rear. The locomotive's pushing the train. Here comes a New Haven line train heading towards New Haven. While we wait to cross to continue walking west on 138th Street, let's just look in the distance here. You can see uh, high-rise residential construction, construction underway, two buildings on the left, and then appearing now, um, completed residential towers. So. A lot of new residential construction taking place here in a, in a place that a generation ago, well, almost two generations ago, was you know a lot of uh, 
elected officials and long-time residents have given up. I think development like that back in the late 60s was desired but inconceivable that it could ever come to fruition. So we're passing under Park Avenue, under the Metro North tracks, and um, this overpass here marks the beginning of Grand Concourse. So we're at 138th Street and Grand Concourse. This is the beginning, the southernmost end of Grand Concourse. Um, this is looking north. Not very impressive now, but on a future walk, we'll walk maybe, well, I don't know about the whole length of Grand Concourse, but we will walk uh, portions of the Grand Concourse and see some Art Deco buildings, apartment buildings. But that's the future walk. For now, let's just take one last look from the vantage point of 138th Street and Grand Concourse. Um, we are across the street from the entrance to the 4 and 5 train at the 138th Street station. We have the Metro North lift bridge, which carries the trains over the Harlem River. We have a New Haven Line train bound for Grand Central. You can tell it's a New Haven Line train because it's got a red stripe on it. Harlem and Hudson Line trains have blue stripes or no stripe at all. So, with that, let's go down into the subway at 138th Street and Grand Concourse. We don't have to wait to cross the street. I'm hoping there's a surprise in this station, a pleasant one. This is a new entrance, you can tell by the tile and the condition of the stairs.
larger scale neighborhood map. And then the more standard digital signage found in all subway stations now. Pleasant surprise I was hoping for. They have restored or replicated the original mosaic in this station that this station was originally titled 138th Street, Mott Haven, when it was first built. first moved to New York in 1971, there was no trace at this station that it was named Mott Haven. All of the signage with words and names said 138th Street or 138th Street Grand Concourse. But the clue that it was once named Mott Haven were these abbreviation mosaics, the initial mosaics at the top, MH. These remained throughout, um, even after all the other traces of the Mott Haven name had been covered up. So I know you're as happy as I am to see this restored. And with new artwork added and with digital signage to keep you informed. And you may have noticed this northbound train has been waiting here for a while. But anyway, enjoying the newly restored Mott Haven signage in the Mott Haven neighborhood of the Bronx this is infrared, and this is what you've been watching.